The federal government reiterates its mission to change the narratives of Nigeria's political destiny through economic recovery, anti-graft campaign, and fight against insecurity. More importantly, what's Nigeria's status amongst the Committee of Nations in the international arena, and how well has the Nigerian government been able to use its instrument of foreign policy to drive Nigeria's national interest, detail recovery of Nigeria's stolen funds, promoting foreign investments, and protection of its citizens abroad? It's question time. Welcome to the program. I'm Benga Ashiru. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. The challenge of deepening democratic institutions in West Africa recently took a nosedive with Gambia embroiled in a political crisis that brings a sad reminder of the era of sit-tight African leaders. As ECOWAS leaders faces a tough task of finding a political solution to the Gambian crisis. In a bid to set the record straight, I had a chat with Nigeria's foreign minister, Jeffrey Oyama. We began by examining how far the foreign ministry has gone in its foreign policy thrusts. Um, I think we've, um, we've done that very successfully, actually. Um, on, with regards to the security that you're talking about, um, what we've been able to do, and I would say um, utilizing um, the person of Mr. President, uh, is a very uh, rigorous and, um, uh, and robust outreach uh, to countries that uh, we felt uh, could help us in, um, with our uh, security challenges. And, uh, and that has been done, I think, extremely successfully. You know, Mr. President has visited a number of countries, and, um, and we've really been able to uh, get a lot of uh, countries uh, to uh, engage more directly with us uh, in our security uh, challenges. And that has been almost uh, entirely due to uh, our foreign uh, policy thrust. So, um, you know, countries sharing intelligence with us, providing us with, uh, with weaponry, and as you know, um, a number of these countries were very reluctant to do so uh, not that long ago. Uh, so that's been you know, a major um, success, I would say, for our uh, foreign policy thrust. Uh, in the area of um, the economy, of course, what we're looking for uh, is foreign direct investment. And, um, and again, there has been um, a very robust outreach to a number of countries. The first thing uh, there is really to um, raise the confidence level of uh, countries around the world about investing in Nigeria and doing business in Nigeria. And, uh, and of course, we faced a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges in the past few years, and uh, a number of countries have uh, been reticent. Um, so we, we've been successful to a large degree uh, in that. But of course, um, there are some measures that we've taken, um, such as the, the, our monetary policies by the SBN, um, that, as you know, um, a number of uh, countries around the world have felt that this has been an impediment um, to their coming into Nigeria to invest. So we are uh, determined as a government to, to get it right uh, on the monetary side and uh, also in the you know, uh, stimulus package uh, side, which we see within the, the budget. You did promise at the global forum, you promised the international community of reuniting the Boko Haram captives with their loved ones. Uh, but when we look at the reality, it presents a different scenario entirely. Because after the release of the 21 Chibok girls, um, not much have been heard about this uh, efforts. Well, you know, when you say not much has been heard, um, I think that's a good thing because um, nothing was heard before the 21 girls were released. And that's just the nature of negotiating uh, in very, very difficult and challenging circumstances. Uh, you have to maintain, um, you know, absolute uh, secrecy and discretion uh, in the negotiations, otherwise you will not get anywhere. It's not something that can be done in the full um, uh, public glare. So, um, so on the contrary, a lot is going on. Um, on two, you know, it's a, it's a two-track approach. The, the military is still uh, committed, still engaged, and still notching up uh, a lot of successes. 
and the negotiating uh, is also going on. Uh, there are intermediaries uh, involved in that and um, so, so, so yes, we have not uh, taken our eye off the ball of reuniting all the hostages with their families. For us, that's a major priority. What's your assessment of the multilateral approach in fighting Boko Haram? The multinational joint task force. Uh, no, not at all. On the contrary, um, they are all fully engaged, fully committed, and all working in unison. And um, I think to, uh, to underscore that, was during the, um, the UNGA, that's the United Nations General Assembly meeting, the, the heads of state of the multinational joint task force, they all met, huddled together around a table to discuss the strategy going forward, the military strategy going forward. And it was uh, particularly uh, uh, instructive because you know we had um, our president who has a military background and they were able to um, uh, you know to discuss um, very important uh, strategic uh, issues so um, so clearly they're all very much still on board uh, nobody has gone off message or off track and um, and, and and we're very um, pleased about that on the Nigerian fronts we seem to be losing uh, soldiers. Uh, as a matter of fact, just recently we lost a colonel, a very brilliant one from the records at that. So could you put things in the right perspective? Well, you know, in, in any conflict situation, there are going to be casualties. I mean, this is, um, this is just the nature uh, of conflicts. And um, however well prepared you are, however well resourced you are, um, it's just in the nature of conflicts that you are going to lose casualties. But, um, and then when you look at the nature of the conflict here, um, it, it makes it all the more difficult because, you know, um, with regards to the Northeast, we're dealing with, um, with um, enemies that um, are employing all kinds of strategies that, um, that makes it uh, very difficult to counter, in particular, you know, um, when you have, you know, civilians, young girls who, on the face of it, uh, look totally benign and harmless, um, being used as instruments uh, of, of, of war and terror, uh, it's always difficult to counter this. And, um, you know, we're making headway, but, um, but it's, it's a conflict that, uh, by its very nature, is going to... Um, unfortunately, um, result in, 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 in casualties. Let's now consider Nigeria's engagement with the outside world. Uh, this is a point where the president made an announcement that there is lack of funds to fund the foreign missions. What's the implication of this on Nigeria's foreign policy? Is this a setback? Um, we do have economic challenges in the country at the moment. And the reality is that it's going to impact uh, on every aspect uh, of our country and uh, will present p particular challenges to, uh, to governance and administration. So what we have to do in these times of economic uh, hardship uh, is really to cut our cloth, um, uh, cut our, cl our coat according to our cloth. And that's what we're trying to do, to rationalize um, our, our missions abroad and um, to, to, to make sure that they are, you know, fit for purpose uh, without being over bloated. Now, having said that, what, um, what impact will that have uh, on our um, foreign uh, um, policy? And uh, this raises a point because I've just come back from New York. And I was also asked a question about, you know, the downsizing and the fact that we don't have ambassadors in our missions. And, um, and one point I made is that um, this has probably shown the quality of the people we have in the foreign ministry. Because notwithstanding the fact that a lot of foreign missions um, have been uh, bereft of, um, you know, ambassadors and so forth, we've still been able to, to score very highly uh, in the multilateral uh, uh, framework and, and, and bilateral framework. Um, you know, for instance, we've, um, we've been pushing at the United Nations General Assembly, um, you know, the, uh, the whole issue of uh, illicit 
uh, a movement of funds uh, around the world. And we've managed to get a General Assembly resolution, uh, Nigeria, uh, a resolution on that. And, um, you know, and this was really um, a manifestation, I think, of the quality of the diplomats we have, that we're able to do that without ambassadors and so forth. And we have able to um, get Nigeria chairing a lot of some very important um, uh, commissions uh, in the United uh, uh, Nations. When you talk of securing resolutions at the United Nations front, do we have enough will to domesticate some of these resolutions? Well, you see, well, we, we, we do, but the most important thing about those resolutions is that um, the other countries, it's, it's, it's going to be binding on all the members of the United Nations. And what are we looking for? We are looking uh, to be able to get um, our, uh, the funds that have been stashed away uh, in other countries uh, to get restitution back to the country. And of course we face all kinds of challenges in doing that and we know that a lot of countries for them, you know, if Nigeria has uh, billions of dollars uh, in their banking system, that's, uh, that's good for them. They might not be in a hurry to get them back to, uh, to Nigeria. So, um, so it was absolutely important for us that we get a resolution like this. It was not easy to get through. It's been going on for over 10 years. But the point I was just trying to make, because you, you know, it was in the context of your question about how our foreign policy is going to be impacted by you know, the economic um, sort of co constraints that we have. And it was just to tell you that um, you know, uh, on a positive light that we have uh, extremely talented people in the uh, in service doing an excellent job and who have been able to not only hold the fort and man the fort um, in the absence of ambassadors but have been able to deliver uh, a very very impressive results for the country um, that brings us to the uh, deployments and also appointments of career ambassadors now a lot of controversy trailed the appointments and um, so many publications saying that you didn't know about the selection, that some cabals in the presidency hijacked the selections and they didn't follow the requirements for selecting career ambassadors. Could you set, uh, set things in the right perspective? No, the truth of the matter is that of course the foreign ministry uh, was, um, was fully engaged uh, in the process of uh, selecting um, career ambassadors and you know there are set criteria you know that's um, that's part of the you know constitutional process and uh, so it could never be a case of one individual arbitrarily making uh, uh, selections we understand that um, some one of the complaints was that uh, a substantial number of the selection was made from the national intelligence agency could you set the record straight? Well, you know, um, I obviously wouldn't in, in public want to start discussing the issues of uh, national uh, security and I don't think any country uh, obviously would. So I'll just uh, uh, leave it at that. As the career ambassadors are being deployed to their various missions abroad, what are the core mandates you are handing over to these diplomats? Okay, um, that's a good question because we really want them to move from just being figureheads and representatives and you know sometimes ambassadors you know there's this image of um, you know cocktail parties and, and, and so forth but um, we really want to um, have a change situation and I made this point when I was addressing them during their induction course that you know Mr. President was elected on a platform of change and it can't be business as usual and we really have to use our presence in 119 countries around the world. It's unique to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, to leverage that unique position to deliver the results that Mr. President promised to the Nigerian people. You may also join in this conversation by sending us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Coming up on Question Time. Setting the record straight on the repatriation of Nigeria's stolen funds. Find out from Nigeria's foreign minister. Join us again. <laughs>